we had good news. We had good news um, in terms of COVID infection status and Essex among a few other counties have moved from dark red to red, which means when we are back in church, we can now move around and offer each other the peace. So I just wanna say that despite this blizzard, at least the blizzard I had here. So the opening hymn is Immortal Invisible. Blessed be God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, <clears throat> to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the next hymn is the Gloria, Hallelujah. Sing 
Reverend Rose, you're on mute. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people. And in our time, grant us your peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Reading from the first lesson of Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, ah, Lord God, truly, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See today I point you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 71, 1 to 6, and we will read it responsively by the whole verse. In you, O Lord, have I taken my refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, O oh God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O oh Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall always be of you. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoings, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. 
But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these is love. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord you, Christ. Lord Christ. Glory be to thee, O Christ, O Lord. Jesus began to speak in the synagogue at Nazareth. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came out of his mouth. They said, is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is there were many widows in Israel at the time of Elijah when the heavens were shut up three years and six months and there was a severe famine over the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So, good morning again. Um, and the gospel we just heard is one, certainly one of the prophetic um, parts of scripture. We heard the earlier part of it last week, but the one line we heard in, in each is about how he began to speak to them. And look at what happened at first, they were amazed that this was the son of Joseph who was preaching to them with wisdom. They didn't say that, but it was clear they accepted everything he was talking about. But what happened? They wanted miracles like the ones that happened in Capernaum. And what does Jesus say? Jesus says that a prophet, uh, a prophet is not accepted in his own town, and he compares, uh, brings up examples of Elijah and Elisha, and they try to, well, they do chase him out of the town, but they want to bring him to throw him off a cliff. And his response is, he passed, well, the, passed through the midst of, midst of them and went on his way. Now, I, in prepping for a sermon, I do a number of things. I read things and I also listen to a podcast. And one of the podcasts I listen to is co-led by uh, a Jamaican-American assistant professor of New Testament. 
Her name is Dr. Althea Spencer Miller. And what she said with this line, this one line, he passed through the midst of them and instead of went on of way, it reminded her of a Jamaican saying about kissing one's teeth. And she even emulated it and I can try to do it, but I probably will not do that very well. It's that sound of going that, okay. And somebody shaking her head. That must've at least did it pretty much correctly. And, and if you know that sound, and if you know, um, you don't have to even hear a word, you know exactly what the person is thinking. <laughs> and what this particular line is, okay, you try to throw me over the, um, the cliff, but and that, here's another line, you know, my hands. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't do it, can you? Um, and very interestingly for me, I did not know this, is that the Greek word about he went on his way is used a numbers of a few times in both Luke and in the Acts of the Apostles. And so there's this reaction of, of the author, Luke, and saying, Whatever you try to do, it's not succeeding. God is succeeding. What else do we have here? Because it is so much about prophecy. It's the prophecy that Jesus read of Isaiah. Um, the prophecy that he declared was his life's work. But also in Jeremiah, and Jer Jeremiah, like many other prophets, we can think of the Moses who stuttered and wanted, didn't want to do what he wanted to do. Jonah who runs away and gets caught up in a mail. What does Jeremiah do? He says, well, I'm only a boy. And we know the end of the story. You know, Jeremiah winds up being a prophet. And, and listen to the words that are said in the book. Now I have put my words in your mouth and God is speaking there <laughs> and that's God's words. See today, I appoint you over the nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Jesus doesn't wait at this point to hear God saying that in the scripture, but he, um, he says after reading Isaiah, as you know, that he was, I am here to fulfill the scripture and it is one of prophet, prophecy. And what happens though? Prophets throughout, and you know, there's numbers of prophets that we hear throughout the church year that I know you've read in different instances, they offer and are basically saying you're not doing it correctly. You have to do something different over and over again. And they're saying the reason you were sent into exile, which you put, you didn't listen to God. The reason you were sent into exile a second time, you weren't, didn't listen to God. Uh, the, the, the whole story in, can be some of the prophets and everything they say is Israelites back then, like all the rest of us don't always listen to God and our, our works are not always there. Now, the interesting ending to all of this, the, and not the ending, it's the other scripture we hear, the scripture from Corinthians, because it punctuates something in it and it's the wonderful reading that many people choose for their um, weddings. But the line about prophecies, if I prophesy and do not have love, I have nothing. Over and over and over again, not a, we hear that it doesn't matter what we do. If we speak prophetic words about in this country this, these days about the political situation, if we do it without love, we have nothing. 
according to St. Paul. And I suspect very strongly that Jesus would have said the same thing because we know his actions. I keep thinking of Bishop Desmond Tudor, and not only because he recently died, but because Wednesdays at SAC are reading chapter by chapter and doing the work in uh, the book, the Book of Forgiveness. And the, the whole reason he was about forgiveness was after South Africa became gave people of color the vote, which was not only black people then, but pe the colored people in Africa were the people of Indian descendants, like Mahatma Gandhi, who at many, a long, long, long time ago, because he's been dead a long time, was in South Africa. So when, when you hear people in South Africa refer to colored people, they're talking about um, the races that are not of African descent and not of white descent, but all the, uh, the other colors. And he, Bishop Tutu wrote and, wrote and said, he knew that if they rose up in violence at this point, when um, at that time, it would only continue the violence. And so what people needed to do then was to forgive, not an easy thing, I am sure, but work with other minorities because the other people were all minorities to build a country. I don't know how they did that. When I really think about that, considering the history of over a hundred years of oppression on numbers of different levels, how people like Nelson Mandela and Bishop Desmond Tutu were able to achieve that is I believe a miracle and only people, only people of high spirituality and the power that comes from God through them can only begin to achieve that. One of the reasons that I really listened to Bishop well, and re now read Archbishop Desmond Tutu is because he's a person who acted and no lonely spoke. You know, the people who speak and their actions are not like that. Their actions don't follow their words. I, I lose interest in following them, I will tell you. Um, I know the words are true, and um, but here we are with this, with this story of Jesus and prophecy who lived the way he spoke and spoke the way he lived. And we are here today, 2000-ish years later. How do we identify the prophets in this world, in our country, that we are hearing now how do we identify them? How do we see people who stand for an egg for writing injustice? How do we take the actions that we can take? I personally believe we're on a cusp politically that if we do nothing about voting rights in other parts of this country, we are headed in, in a direction that will be very difficult to correct from now on. I, I personally believe that. We are called to act. We are called to act. We need to do what we can to stand up for correcting voting rights in these other states. Maybe a march. And I know we're all 
getting older. I'm seeing some of the faces I see here and you may have marched a whole lot of years ago, uh, maybe not, but um, it's harder to do that as you age. Maybe you need to call senators and representatives. Maybe we need to teach others. Whatever that is, I am not telling you, I know everything that we need to do, but I know that if this country does not act now, and if, and if voting goes the way it is going to go now that the federal um, law was turned down several years back, we are not gonna have a lot of action options. It is our turn to follow the prophecy of those that we hear. And one I hear and mostly read, I will tell you, is Reverend William um, Barber. I'm hoping I'm remembering that correctly. I didn't write it down, who is calling for marches on Washington's. He's calling, um, he's calling it the Poor People's Campaign. We need, we need to do something. And if we can't march, if everyone does at least one thing, maybe this can get overturned. And let us remember that, to quote Luke, going to misquote it in the way that Dr. Althea Spencer Miller said, remember that Jesus could pass through the midst of them and kiss his teeth. We know God has the power. We know that. And if we remember that in our daily lives, what we do can help what is going on now. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, God the, Father, the Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people from liturgy for the whole church. Shine in your church, O God. Embolden us in a dark world to speak truthfully and to act with the courage of love. This day and always. Christ be our light. Shine on your world, O God. Heal the warring of nations and wounding of the earth to give us peace at last, this day and always. Christ, be our light. our light. Shine for your people, O God. Make us one human family who clothe each other with mercy and feel 
each other with justice. This day and always, Christ, Christ be our Lord. light. Shine in our hearts, O God. Help us to teach to the heavens and deep in our souls to seek you, to find you, and to know you. This day and always, Christ, Christ be our light. Shine in the saints and departed, O God. Teach us to follow their lead to outrageous faith and eternal love. For those who died, the victims of violence and war, mm -hmm. victims of COVID. Yeah, the policemen that died in that shooting. This day and always, Christ be our, Christ be our, our life. life. Shine for the afflicted, O God. Remind them of your deep compassion and how you tenderly bear all our sorrows. For Daryl Sheldon, who is having surgery, Harrison Jens, Celine Umibek Bolu, Ashley, Stella Wren, Will, and Silas, Jessica, Brianna, Allison, Janice, Mary, Eva, Oscar, Joe, Val, Janet, and Patricia. And Paul and Susie, Larry and Dana, Lynette, Pat. For the homeless at this time of the year in this bitter cold, We pray for those who are traveling this week. Anyone traveling this week? Just any vendors, no one traveling. We can pray for anyone traveling in these weather conditions this week. So we will say the prayer for anyone in the world traveling with these weather conditions. Oh God, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose, and whose presence, presence we find wherever we go. Preserve those who travel, in particular all these gathered here and those who travel with them, and bring them in safety to their journeys and through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Amen. This day and always. Christ be your light. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. This new day added to our lives, our family, and our friends, our health, God's protection upon us. All our blessings tonight to name and number. For Billy and Sarah's wedding last week. God bless. Mm. For this church family. Amen. Do we have any birthdays in the weeks that's passed or the week to come? My nephew's birthday is today. Happy birthday to your nephew. My goddaughter Debbie's birthday is February 1st. Happy birthday, Happy birthday Debbie. Debbie. Any other any more birthdays? Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless, Bless and guide them wherever, them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And, fall. and in their, their hearts, hearts may your, your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of your life. life. Through, Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Do we have any anniversaries in the weeks that's passed or the week to come? Doesn't seem so. This day and always. Christ, Christ be, be our life. life. 
shine, O God, o God as, as the, the light, light that creates, the, the light that calls, the light that comes in with every, with every dawn. dawn. Shine, shine as, as the, the light, light that scatters every, every shadow, shadow, and the light and in which we promise to walk Lord, with your help. Your help. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. Peace, everyone. Sweet. Peace. Yes, I'm switching you to gallery, which you all can do. That's how you can see each other if you don't know how to do that. Um, peace, everybody. It's a long peace time since Lord. we've done this right now. Anyway. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Okay. <laughs> and there's Judy, and if, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> okay. Um, no real uh, anything to say um, about anything here, except walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. And the hymn is Lord of the Dance. Hmm. <clears throat> Lord of the dance and he and I'll lead you all wherever 
Reverend Rose. Thank you. I mute when I'm singing um, and then I forget. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give you thanks, thanks and praise. praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord. Lord. God, God of power, power and might, might. heaven and, and earth, earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this of the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all. 
presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where, with St. Andrew and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of our all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> and now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Jesus, believe, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. The gifts of God for the people of God. And the hymn is, Here I Am, Lord.
let us pray together. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world Amen. And the blessing of God who created us, who gave us Jesus Christ to redeem us and be prophetic in his name and the Holy Spirit who continually is with us every day, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 So announcements. Um, uh, first, uh, just next week is a, a, a an, the second Affirmation of Faith Forum. It is at 12.30 at St. George's, and Jarek is the one who's going to be somehow conveying 2,000 years of church history to us in a way that is um, understandable. Um, and other uh, announcements are with the congregation and the stewardship committee is still looking for pledges. Um, and there's a link in the blast, a pledge card at the back of the church, which no one can ex access right now. But if you need one, contact Eva and I, her, um, her email and phone number is in the bulletin. And also because February 1st is just days away, we're going to be highlighting Christian formation, which includes everything from munchkins on through adults. And there's two announcements if you believe yourself to be a Christian artist. And I will tell you, those of you who take pictures of the church could be considered a Christian artist. I just wanna know there's several of in, you in here that I know enjoy taking pictures and art includes many things. Nominating committee, I'll turn over to Jarek. Thank you, Reverend Rose, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I've been announcing every week, the nominating committee has been announcing every week, inviting uh, parishioners to take up leadership um, roles in the church at the next annual meeting. And that list, um, that nominating process is now final. All offices are uncontested except for the junior warden where we have two nominees. In the event of um, a situation where we have two nominees, we have to hold a ballot at the annual general meeting. The annual general meeting will be on February 27th and an in-person ballot will be held um, the committee and the vestry are still working out the modalities of that, but there will be opportunities before church, after church, and with all COVID restrictions and um, social distancing protocols in place. So just be prepared that if you would like to cast your ballot in the February 27th election, it will be in person. On February 13th, which is the Sunday after next, each candidate will present themselves to the congregation after church, introducing themselves and telling you why they are, what gifts they bring to serve you in the leadership of St. Andrew and Holy Communion. But the details and logistics for the um, election like time place and so on will be forthcoming, but that those details are being worked out. Thank you. Thank you, Jarek. Um, any other announcements for the good of the community right now? Yes, Rose, it's Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, I just wanted to let folks know that um, the Vanco app, there's a little bit of a glitch. So uh, sometimes if if you go into the app on your phone, the new one that is, to make an additional contribution for whatever the reason, occasionally it may not work or it may tell you that um, you don't have bank information or something. I forget what the error is. That can be corrected if you log out and log back in again. Banco's aware of this little glitch and they're working to fix it. Um, but I've had that happen to me, and I know others have as well. And usually if you log out and log back in, 
everything is fine. Thank you, Joe. Anything else for the good of the community? Yes, Reverend Rose, I just have a couple of quick announcements from the communications committee. Um, we met yesterday and we were talking about how to reach people who don't like to read emails or don't read their emails. Um, so we, as you know, we send out a weekly email blast, but not everybody looks at that. Um, so we have two possible solutions and would love to hear back from anybody who's interested. Uh, one would be for us to do a monthly hard copy newsletter and send it to those who would prefer to receive their news that way. And if you're interested in that, please let me or Reverend Rose know um, so that we can develop a, a mailing list. Um, the other option is to join a group text um, for those who just wanna be notified of important things coming up. We wouldn't bombard anybody with a, a lot of texts, but just um, important dates or like we would have been able to text everybody yesterday saying that um, church is going to be all remote today, um, things like that. So if you're interested in that, also contact me or Reverend Rose with your um, cell phone number so that we can add you to a group text list. And um, that's it, thanks. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Yes, good morning. Good morning. This is Janice Jones. I didn't unmute in time to say this during prayers uh, when we were asking for Thanksgiving. I just wanna thank um, the entire media group um, for all the work that they've done um, for putting together this wonderful service. Um, the level of sophistication that you have gained uh, with regard to the Zoom service is, is, is just wonderful. And I just wanna tell you how much I appreciate all of your efforts. Thank I just you. I wanna so say much. amen. It really amen. Is, uh, because amen. what work went into researching and trying to figure this out and uh, and hopefully you know so thank you thank you and amen and really spearheading this i just will say is joe and kelly and even jarek and even donald at times um they were uh but the, the people who really know much more about tech than the rest of us are Joe and, and, and Kelly and have really come up with most of the ideas. So I wanna thank them. Um, Man, thank you, we so appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so Rose, I just wanted, uh, I've been asking for special prayers for my niece and uh, I just wanted everyone to know that she had the in utero surgery at Cleveland Children's Hospital and she had a little bit of problems afterwards, but she has been released and is going to be uh, staying for the duration of her pregnancy in Cincinnati under the guidance and, and care of the Cincinnati Children's Hospital team. And I just wanna thank everybody who's been praying. This is a really, difficult situation. The baby's been diagnosed, Stella's been diagnosed with spina bifida. So it's, uh, thank you all for your prayers. I just really appreciate it. And wanted to give that uh, really great news uh, to the church. You're welcome. And send an update for the prayer list because that would be helpful too. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And since I'm hearing nothing else right now, let us sing. Love divine, all loves excelling.
Wonderful. And let us go forth in the yes. name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, Reverend Rose. <laughs> Dear Pay. You're welcome, Elaine. It's good to see you. So. Good to be here. <laughs> yeah. And hope this is the last, last. I still have more shoveling later to do. Oh, my, to do. oh my goodness. I'm going to oh, tell you, my goodness. tenant helped yesterday because I would not be anywhere near. Um, he's a yeah, but he's a young man and his wife fallen told him. And mm -hmm. so um so I'm very happy for that. He did most of the really hard work. Um, well, that's good. Yeah. He has youth, he has youth on his side. You think Yes, he that. does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope I hope maybe this is the last of it, but you never know. Well, January is out now, so. Well, February is, isn't that much of a improvement. We'll see. <laughs> I'm 